Americans are choosing to be child free. And what does that mean for financial planning? Well, here to talk with me about that is Bill Harris from WH Cornerstone. Bill, welcome. Hey, great to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Bill, and I'll be doing even better after you sort of hand walk us through this trend that you're noticing in your financial planning practice. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I'm going to say it's anecdotal evidence. In the last couple of years, I've been starting to see a lot of clients coming in without any kids. And I started to and, and I got to be honest, I fit into that category. I don't have any kids. So I started to say, huh, I wonder how big this group is. And so just a couple stats for you. 44% of non-parents between the ages of 18 and 49 indicated that it wasn't too likely or likely at all that they would someday have children. Um, and then the U.S. Census Bureau showed that 15.2 million, 15 million adults age 55 and older uh, will be childless, child, childless uh, and that's about one in six uh, or 16.5 percent. So it's not a, a massive number, but it's a big number. It's a it's a huge number, and I'm guessing there's some financial planning issues for them that may be different from couples with children. The, there is, I, I think, and again, anecdotally, I think uh, couples hit a certain age, legacy starts to become a bigger deal, and obviously people are always worried about the kids and want to take care of the kids, and so when that isn't in the equation, it's, I'm not going to say it, it gets challenging, but it's definitely a different set of circumstances, and, and that I'm going to say that, quote, die with zero starts to become a little bit more realistic, um, but I will also say couples like that, um, I not I, I, from my experience, it's, been the, it, it, it's almost like a blind side. They don't, they're not really thinking about it. Um, I mean, they know they're saving for retirement, but they're not really planning for, um, like, estate planning in the traditional way. And so can I, can I make up some examples? Uh, like, to me as a planner, it's like, okay, you know, make each other each other's beneficiaries on your 401K. But after that, what do you want to do? And you usually get a blank stare because there's no one. Now, some people have fairly close extended family, nieces, nephews, and things like that, and it's easy. But some, some of them don't. So I'll just tell it like a couple. Imagine a couple that, you know, they're from different parts of the country. They met in the corporate world. They might have been remarried. Their family's scattered all over the country. Um, and, you know, it's, it's very difficult. It's difficult for them to agree on maybe a charity or where that, where that money is going to go. I can tell you one case where the wife was like, oh, I want to give it to the local animal shelter, and the husband's rolling his eyes going, that ain't going to happen. Um, and then you take a different couple, like they might have met in college. Uh, they go to the same church. They're you know, passionate about the environment, whatever. And when you start talking charity and things like that about them for you know, the, the, the residual of their state, it's a lot easier. Uh, so it, it has its challenges, but it's kind of fun. Well, we're, again, our experience has been... Uh, People don't make decisions quickly in this space. Uh, they're like, yep, that's a good point. Let's talk about it next time we meet. And that's kind of, and, and that's our job is to keep bringing it up with them. Yeah. So you mentioned this notion of leaving a legacy of, of some sort. Uh, you also mentioned in the article that you've written for Retirement Daily about this notion of having a greater availability of resources at their disposal because they didn't have to spend it on raising children. Correct. So they didn't have big college bills that they had to pay for or, or you know, just the, the cost of raising kids. It's, let's, you know, you can see government statistics on that all the time. It's expensive. So they didn't have that. So there's kind of a more, I'm going to say selfish, like, hey, we can spend this on ourselves. So it's a little bit different. Um, but, but again, the, the traditional estate planning documents, I think, are even more important. You know, simple things like joint uh, with rights of survivorship. I can't tell you, like, a lot of these couples with no kids, oh, I have a bank account, you know, my partner has a bank account, we have bank accounts everywhere, and they're not, they don't own them jointly, and then something happens, it's a big problem. So just the little things of buttoning up, like, hey, let's make sure all your accounts are jointly owned. Let's make sure you have beneficiaries in place. Let's make sure after the, the primary beneficiaries, something is named. Um, and, you know, I think every state in the union has their own inheritance laws if you don't have things named on what, what will happen. So... Those, those are big issues. And then, you know, other things, it's not necessarily estate planning, but are extremely important. Long-term care, disability, you know, if you don't have kids to take care of you, how's that going to work? Uh, and, and you have, you, you know, you just have to think about that stuff. Yeah. Um, what about um, health care planning? Uh, yeah, so health care planning is a huge deal. Obviously, there's documents like health care proxies, like if you can't make decisions on who's going to make them for you. And then in, in, in situations like this, 
couples with no kids, obviously each other is going to be like their healthcare proxy. But when that other person isn't there, who's going to make those decisions? So it, it's a big deal. Um, you know, simp another thing, like people have trusts and they have a trustee and they name their spouse as trustee. Well, after that trustee is no longer around, who is going to step in? And so it, it's just a little bit more thought that needs to go into this. And, I, you know, in that case, probably a professional trustee is going to make a lot of sense. But, you know, a lot of times people will be like, well, it'll be my spouse and it'll be my cousin Jimmy. And then my, you know, my other cousin Paul will be after him. And they might be older than this person, might not be around. So, again, it's just bringing it to people's attention and talking about it. Yeah. I, I mean, that. that... <laughs> You say a, a little bit of time. It seems like there might be a lot more time to think about it. You mentioned insurance a second ago. Um, life insurance needs might be different for a child-free couple than a, a couple with children or disability insurance, but, I mean, all that stuff, long-term care insurance. Yeah, well, life insurance is a big deal. So just think about it in, in the peak earning years, obviously you're insuring for the loss of income. Um, and, and so and think of a young family. They're probably buying insurance in case – Something happens to the, the primary uh, breadwinner that college is paid for, retirement's funded, all that kind of stuff. And if you don't have those needs, like that changes dramatically. Now, there's other reasons why you might need life insurance. Uh, it's still for some of that income replacement. Uh, might be for estate taxes, things like that. But a lot of the need of taking care of a family goes away when you don't have kids. Uh, what about retirement in terms of planning for streams of income, Social Security benefits, investing strategy? I think the, 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 it's the same strategy of what you're accumulating, and I, I think you know, most planners are going to get what's, what, need of you, what are you going to need like when you're in retirement. So that's a similar model, but I think that need is a lot less when you're not worried about funding a legacy. Uh, and then also, like I didn't write about this in the article, but there's all, you know, a lot of people have special needs kids um, and planning for them. And so... You know, that's a big part of planning. And when you're a childless couple, that's an, another thing that you just don't have to plan around. Yeah. What about tax planning? Anything there that people need to think about? I think, uh, listen, I'm, I'm a tax hawk, so I'm always planning around taxes. So it's, you know, but I still think it's the same. Uh, you get the same issues. You got capital gains issues. You got income issues. And I think you just want to plan around those things. Yeah. So one thing I think about with child-free couples is this notion of, I guess two things. One is, uh, on the one hand, you might be caring for aging parents. On the other, when you're when this child-free couple is older and maybe one of the spouses die, there could be a solo ager, and that solo ager may not have anyone to care for them. Is that a concern for you? It, it, it's a, it's a real concern, Bob. So I'll just share a personal. I I know we were going to cut this video a little early in the week, and my wife had her hip replaced. Uh, and we have these conversations like, God, imagine if I wasn't here, like who would have taken care of you? And so you, you do see that, that you've got to really think about this when there's, there's no kids around, who's going to step in and help out. And I think, I think advice that I would like to give, and it's not foolproof, is you better start to build, develop that network. And I, Bob, I think you were involved in um, a network of helping people, if I, if I remember correctly, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like you've got to have that network around you that's going to help you. Uh, in times of needs, because again, the average age of widowhood is, is like 59, and so one one spouse could live a long time. So there's a lot of planning. The planning is challenging. It's just different. Yeah, I know in many communities they might have a, a village where it's you know people helping people. In other cases, it might be a church, a synagogue, or a Coun councils on aging. Yep, yeah, all those come into play. But you're right about, you know, getting familiar with all these services in advance of having the need because you want to develop relationships and and uh, and not. And, and of course, the other thing I think about, especially with solo aging, is to not be afraid to ask for help right. when the time comes. And so many people are reluctant to do so. But uh, the, the world is increasingly filled with solo ages. And I think for people who are child free couples, that concern is greater than perhaps um, than with other families that do have children. In our practice, we call curveball life planning, um, and I'm going to be sexist. Men don't ever think they're going to die. <laughs> and so we're always getting people to plan around these things, um, and unfortunately they do. And, you know, you got to have a plan in place. So, you know, if I can leave you with anything, make sure you have a plan in place. Well, Bob, I'm sure – I know you have kids. I'm sure you've also joked, like, 
well, they'll, they can take care of me in my old age. And then, you know, the, the, your spouse is probably like, I'm not letting them take care of me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I tend to say to them sometimes is uh, there will come one time when I won't be around and it will be up to you to make sure that mom's taken care of. So, yeah. so far, no qualms about it, but the time hasn't come just yet. So. <laughs> Bill, anything we didn't talk about or anything that just needs no, to be I, I, I think that covers it. I mean, you, you could get into the nuances of how Social Security works and everything else. And I just I think this is more of just a an article to make people aware, like one, the hey, there's a lot of people out there without kids. And, you know, it's it's a trend and it seems to be getting bigger. That stat I read earlier is like that number is way up from where it was 10 years ago. So the number is getting bigger. And then again, the challenge is. Are, you know, they're manageable, but you got to think about them. You got to talk about them. Yeah. Bill, as you know, we so appreciate you coming on these videos, writing the articles for Retirement Daily. Uh, we're ever so grateful, and I know our readers and viewers benefit a good deal. Well, the pleasure is mine. I enjoy doing it. So thank you for, for letting me uh, talk about them.